Yo, what is what is taking him so long? The way I see it, you're always three against it. Oh, three, yeah, that's right. Well, tell your mom to stop poking holes in my condoms. I don't care if you're 12, your mom's a 10. Oh, what's up, bro? We'll continue this later. How's it going, man? We got shoulders today, right? Let's go. All right, we changed up the scenery today. Uh, we we're at Self Made uh, over here in Costa Mesa hitting shoulders and Max had to take a shit. So I did two sets at about 30. I'm doing delt presses. This is how I always start off shoulders, guys. I always go for this lift. Very rare day if I don't. So I did like 30 pounds uh, with the DBs for 10 reps or whatever, and then I did 40. And now we're actually gonna start getting some weight up. I'm definitely gonna go for 100. Um, I hit 110s about two, two months ago. I'll see if I can hit 110s right now if it feels good enough. And then I'm just gonna show you the flow of my shoulder workout, which is again, very unique. And some of the things that I'll do for shoulders, I've posted on TikTok and they get a lot of hate because they don't look healthy, but they are. And I'm gonna get into how you protect your shoulder when you do workouts. I've never hurt myself in the gym. The only time I hurt myself was when somebody didn't spot me properly and I was out for like two days. So we'll give 65s a spin. That should feel good. I feel good right now too. 65s are easy. So we're three sets deep. Uh, we'll throw up the, we'll throw up 90s. We'll see how that feels. And then we'll either go like 105s or 110s for shoulders. And then uh, I'll show you some other shit. <clears throat> 90s feel a little heavy today, shit. I thought that was gonna be easier. And now after doing that, that set, I don't even feel confident that I can throw up the 100s like butter, but we'll do that. And then we'll start moving into more of like a rhythmic, good flow for shoulders, lateral raises, rear delt raises. I'm really, everybody's all about like rear delts for shoulders. I'm all about interior. I just think it's a lot more boss to have. Obviously you want everything, but to have this bulging from the front. So we'll see how this goes right now. I don't, I thought I was gonna be stronger today, but I did a two a day for the first time in a while. So you didn't eat? Yeah, I didn't eat yet. That's true too, but let's throw this up. <clears throat> <clears throat> That's good. That's respectable. And then I'll show you how I like to do my lateral raises. Let's grab these 20s. We'll just go straight into it. Like this, right? Typical lat raise. We'll do six, eight, whatever, right? I'm not a big rep counter. Now look at this. So we went here. Now we're opening up. Four feels good. And then same thing except, boom. So we went here, here. Now we'll take a little break. Get some more reps out. All right, so we'll do the same thing with the same weight one more time, right? And then we're gonna get into a little bit more of a denser way to hit shoulders. When I mean by denser, I just mean denser. It's a really good thickness in the muscle. This is more for triggering some growth. Then we'll go into packing some density. Take the guns off safety. So. I can do these with 70s or 80s today. We'll give it a go, but I'm just gonna hit the, we'll do one set at 40. So hold something, hold this, get some stability. We start here, right in the middle. It's just all arms, right? Six is the magic number here, five or six. Switch it up. This next set, we'll do 75. But it's a different, different technique, different flow. If you try to do that with heavy ass weight, you're gonna fucking hurt your shoulder. So now it's about using some momentum, going with your arm like a pendulum, but freezing at the top for half a second. And you still get that really good burn, really dense, thick pump. So now here's a different technique, right? Before I was standing up and I'm using my fucking arm. Now I need to protect my shoulder, but I also wanna get it fucking big. I wanna get it dense. I wanna work some serious weight. Right here, we're just like if you were doing a single arm dumbbell row, same type of form. One, two, three. See how my body's going with the weight a little bit? <clears throat> Holding at the top, <sighs> freezing gravity. That's what I like to call it. freeze gravity for just that half second. You'll feel it, it's fucking great. So again, like a pendulum, that first one's the toughest. Boom, one. <sighs> we're gonna start lightening the weight, but we're gonna start supersetting. So we'll go easier on the body with our, with our weight, but we're not gonna give it a break. Work out like the waves of an ocean, right? Sometimes some sets come in harder, bigger. Sometimes it's a little bit more subtle. Right now, my energy level's high, but just instinctually, like where my body's at right now is I cannot go as heavy as I'd like. So now I'm gonna start cranking into hypertrophy instead of strength. So we just hit rear, let's go anterior. Just like this, right? Nice little half second squeeze at the top. 
Crank up the weight. Now we'll go 25, 27.5, fuck it. We're on year. We're gonna do a rear delt. Again, right, this is third time. I can't really name what the workout would be called. It's a single arm rear delt. I don't know what you wanna call that. It's not really a row, a pull. We're gonna use a dumbbell. 30 feels like it's a little challenging, a little easy at the same time. Again, you can flip your grip. So look how my, I'm right here. You just wanna get it away from your leg. When I first started doing these, I'd bump my shin. So just make sure you're going out wide, coming in wide, five or six. And then you guessed it, flip your grip. It's a straight rear delt. So a lot of fitness influencers don't do anything different. Like they don't break the mold. They don't, they don't even try to, you don't need to reinvent the wheel, but they don't even try to inspect the wheel. Like they don't try to see what they can make better. It's just the same shit, different day. Like when I first tried to do the fitness thing when I was younger, I'm 31. So when I was like 20, 21, 22, 23, nothing's changed. It's the same shit. Fake natties, tricep pull downs for triceps. Enter my promo code. If anything, it's gotten more mundane and more boring. So I, I look at that kind of content, which is like 99% of the, industry and I'm just like, this is fucking trash content. Just up the weight a little bit. Oh, if I ate before this or maybe we're two weeks deeper in cycle, I would have this with 45s and do a military press. This is a very boss workout, a very badass workout because it really does demonstrate where you reside upper body wise with your strength. Military press, it's like basically just a deadlift for your upper body. What could we do here? Since you're incorporating smaller muscles, you're not gonna be able to put up anywhere remotely near what you could do for an actual deadlift. But repetitions are gonna re remain supreme right here. But again, we're gonna superset. We'll do an upright row. So your elbows are gonna dictate. So if they're like this, or if you yank it too high, you want them, you want them right above the, the bar. Right above the bar. Half second pause, right? More tired than I expected to be today. Um, probably should have had something before we came over here, but I'm gonna show you an ab workout that I've been doing since I was very young. Uh, then we're gonna go to the, back to the kitchen. Chicken, uh, like kind of like a chicken, it's like a Mediterranean salad wrap with grilled chicken is what we're gonna have post-workout, um, which will be my first meal of the day. For all my golfers, I used to train golfers. This is one of the things that we used to do. It's a great core workout. I wanna end up on some rotations. A nice rotational <sighs> exhale when I cross. Workout is what the doctor ordered right now. I'm gripping right here at the end of the rope, one hand over, pushing through my palm to really get the core at the end of the workout. Pivot that back foot. So now we're going this way. I just switched the grip. I was here. Now I go under over. Two to three sets, call it a day. We'll eat some food. All right, shoulder workout was a big success. We are going to do grilled, what the fuck was that? Fucking ghost in here. All right, shoulder workout was a big success, guys. Uh, called it quits a little bit early. I need a refuel. Uh, and what better way to do it than with a, a lavash wrap? This is something I've been making for years. It's going to be a chicken uh, wrap with lavash bread. I get my lavash bread at Trader Joe's. We'll be using lettuce, tomatoes, carrots. I'll season the chicken uh, in a very simple but spicy way, just salt and cayenne. And then we will, as always, do a macro count uh, after this is done. As always, we're cooking with butter. Whenever I use the cast iron, it's always gonna be butter uh, for that butyric acid, that colon health. Uh, so we're starting off with that. It's already ready to go. I'm going to throw on my two chicken cutlets right on the cast iron. We will start to season immediately. The way I like to cook my chicken, guys, is I, I like to just cover the lid and you know, it'll be done in 20 minutes. There's no, there's no issues. Sometimes if you, if you cook it and sometimes you cut into it and it's still raw, that's the worst part. I like a concise 20 minutes, so I always just cover uh, my chicken. So cayenne pepper, salt. Again, cooking is just timing and pairing of ingredients. You don't need to know, you don't need to be a master chef. You just need to know what works. It's gonna be a spicy wrap. Again, we're going back in for a little more salt. I'll cover the lid. We'll keep the flame at like a three. Then I'm just gonna prep up uh, the salad. It's gonna be a very basic salad. You could throw a little fruit in there. You can throw nuts, depending what you're trying to do. This is just gonna be lettuce and onion, tomato. I already got my carrots chopped and ready to go uh, to save some time. But at the end of the day, it's the lavash wrap that just makes this so good with a really good flavorful uh, chicken breast. So two things about me, not a good chopper, never have been. And uh, I typically don't wash my vegetables because fuck it, but fast die young. The reason why I like the carrot or throwing in the carrots is because it gives me like a really healthy crunch. 
It's kind of like when you, when you bring in uh, potato chips into your sandwich or something, you get like a nice texture, a good crunch. I love tomatoes, onions. It's just really basic stuff, but then when you throw in a really flavorful chicken, if you have some avocado, that's great. I'll throw the lavash or if it's a pita, I'll throw it right here. It's the best way. So I'm not gonna put the chicken in the salad. It's gonna wilt the greens because it's coming off hot, right? So I'm just gonna season this, very standard, easy, typical way. Call it two to three tablespoons of olive oil. When balsamic vinegar, I don't care how much you wanna put in there, just make sure it's on a dry salad. And then instead of cayenne pepper, because we already got that with our chicken, we're just doing salt and pepper, very basic, right? Okay, we'll mix that bitch up. There you have it. Um, the rest of the chicken is basically just, you could say it's cooking or just staying hot. Wrap it up, get a good crunch. You know, if somebody at Chipotle gave me a burrito like this, I'd fucking lose my shit, but when I do it at home, it's fine. So guys, when it comes to macros, the, the only thing I find really tough is, is counting your fat. Uh, whether you're eating a steak or, you know, it's ground turkey or whatever the fuck it is, it can't take accountability into you know, how much fat are you actually getting? How much fat's getting rendered? How much fat are you not eating off the steak? So I always tell my clients to just kind of deduct a little bit. Um, point in case if, you know, if it's a 10% fat uh, ground turkey and you're eating the whole thing, but you cooked it on the, on the stove for 10 minutes, you're rendering out some fat, call it 30%. So with that said, these are accurate but not precise macros. When it comes to carbs, this is 50 grams of carbs. So in the trace carbs, this is 23 times two because a whole piece of this is 46 grams of carbs. So I'm just gonna call this 50 grams of carbs. Uh, when it comes to the protein, we're right around 25 to 30 grams per piece. And then when it comes to fat, I would say right around 10 grams of fat, using that we cooked some with some butter. How can you detect how much butter you're putting into uh, everything that you're doing? So I never stress out about how many macros I'm getting into my meal. I just wanna know, I wanna get an accurate but not precise. And when I talk to my clients, I say, give me an accurate but not precise reading of what your macros are so I can assign you proper macros. The moment you want to start weighing things and make everything precise and stuff like that is when you can't live like this. I don't want to do that, so I never have. Hope you enjoyed this. Uh, we'll be back next week and catch you later.